Welcome to the Weekday Report for Thursday, May 1st. I'm Jeffrey Zampanti. Here's a brief look at the news. After sitting dormant since 2008, the Virginia Towers building downtown is ready to house its first tenants. Virginia Towers was originally developed to house luxury condos, but the economy tanked just as the building was finished. The building was rescued when it was bought from a bank and developed into apartments for senior citizens. Work is now wrapping up at the downtown structure and residents can inquire with Pioneer Property Management about rental options. Gateway Technical College President Brian Albrecht is a finalist for Chancellor at the University of Wisconsin Stout. Albrecht, a Stout alumnus, is one of five finalists for the job leading the university. President of Gateway since 2006, Albrecht has been credited with a growing enrollment creating new worker training programs and forging partnerships with local corporations. The UW Board of Regents is expected to announce the new Stout Chancellor on June 5th. Police heard different stories about who knew that a man was being set up for a robbery when he was asked to make a drug deal. Anthony M. Edwards was fatally shot April 14th when police say he went to sell marijuana to two people near the intersection of 58th Street and 11th Avenue. Marquise Tibbs, one of three men charged in connection with Edwards' death, told police he didn't know it was going to be a robbery and said Joseph Jamal Brantley pulled out the gun, took the drugs, and then fired the single shot. Brandon Horrock set up the drug deal and told police he knew the two men planned to steal the marijuana. Horrock has been charged with felony murder. The Kenosha Police Department moved into the top spot on Wednesday for having the most popular law enforcement Facebook page in the country for agencies its size, with over 18,000 followers. The site gained steam recently with over 700 new followers in the past two weeks, including nearly 200 on Wednesday alone. Kenosha was second on the list for months until pulling ahead of the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office in Louisiana. Kenosha boasts the state's top law enforcement Facebook page with over 5,000 more followers than the Milwaukee Police Department. Bradford baseball edged out Tremper in 10 innings Wednesday. Mike Johnson has the story. Bradford starter Kyle Schultz toes the rubber in the Red Devils' 4-3 extra innings win over Tremper in a Salty's Conference game at Augie Schmidt Field Wednesday. Schultz tossed six scoreless innings after a rocky first, and Vinny Hubley's base hit in the bottom of the 10th plated the winning run for Bradford. The Red Devils remained perfect in the SEC at 5-0. Tremper, meanwhile, got one RBI apiece from Justin Levy, Christian Jamudio, and Willie Biggie. Mike Johnson, Kenosha News. What's trending today? Efforts to raise the federal minimum wage from seven and a quarter to ten dollars and ten cents an hour appeared stalled after Republicans voted to block the debate on a bill in the U.S. Senate. Where would you like to see this issue wind up? Tell us on our Facebook page. Up next are Brian Sharkey and Liz Snyder with some Get Out Entertainment ideas. Hi, I'm Brian Sharkey. And I'm Liz Snyder with your entertainment news. This week, we're looking ahead to the Mother's Day weekend. The Get Out section has a guide for planning the perfect day with your mom. We're going to offer you ideas on where to go for a hike, where to find some art exhibits or special brunches. And we even found some area spots offering a quick tropical break for mom. That sounds fun. And the Get Out section also details new tours of the Research Tower at SC Johnson Company in Racine. The tower, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, is open to the public for the first time since it opened in 1950. And opening Friday is Shakespeare's comedy The Taming of the Shrew at UW Parkside. This production is set during the World War II era with the main character, a headstrong woman called a shrew, being none other than Rosie the Riveter. And in the play, Rosie the Riveter and other women who had been working in factories during the war are told by all those returning soldiers to go back home and start having babies. And the big movie opening this weekend is The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which sees our web-slinging superhero taking on three supervillains. Wow. <laughs> For all these stories and more, see Friday's Get Out Entertainment section. I'm Brian Sharkey. I'm Liz Snyder. Get, Get out, out and, and have, have some fun. fun. Thanks, Brian and Liz. Now here's a look at what we're working on today. Longtime Kenosha County Supervisor and St. Joseph Administrator Bob Carbone died this week. Terry Flores is putting together a story. And we'll have coverage of today's National Day of Prayer observation in Kenosha. Pick up a copy of the Kenosha News and check kenoshanews.com for all the details on these stories and more. I'm Jeffrey Zampanti with the Weekday Report.